Well, thanks for giving me your time here. I know it's you've got to be a busy time with a new book coming out and all. Oh, it's it's okay. It's uh, it's it's busy as usual. Yeah, it stays pretty busy. I bet. Absolutely. So, uh, what? Tell us about your new book. Well, the new book is called The Lost Civilization Enigma. It's um, out on October 22nd, and it's it's really the successor to the previous book, which is The Ancient Alien Question. And the, which the I fact have. of the yay, <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the fact of the matter is that you know the Ancient Alien Question really explores whether or not we are alone were we visited in the past or not. And that gives us a, an overview of, of, of our history. But it's also a very specific quest. It's really looking at history and finding an, almost a proverbial needle in the haystack, which is, is there evidence of an extraterrestrial contact in our past? And you know, the book answers the question saying, yes, um, there was. But our history is more interesting than, than just those, those contacts. It's also, um, you know... Thousands of years of 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 material, which really I think the history books haven't really been dealing with all that well. So, for example, what we're presented with is is almost as if 4000 BC ancient Sumeria begins, and then we have ancient Egypt, we have you know Greece, Rome, medieval times, us. And even though there are pockets of of information there which suggests that there is something preceding that 4000 BC date, we seem to think it's just pockets. Jericho, Catalyuac, more recently Gobekli Tepe, which has been posted at, at 10,000 BC. And then when you go to France, you're confronted with cave paintings which are 20,000 years old. And if you go into the bailiwick of, of the likes of Michael Cremo, they will tell you that there is even more material before that, hundreds of thousands, millions of years of material suggesting that mankind is older, but also that civilization is older. Um, what to do with things like Atlantis? What to do with things like Lemuria? And what the Lost Civilization Enigma is really about is, is delving into all of these subjects. It's basically uh, concluding something which I think is familiar with the with people who have read the Ancient Alien Question, which is that science, um, despite the fact that we think it's all about exploring boundaries, you know, boldly going where no man has gone before, um, actually, it's absolutely not the case. Science is is pretty much all about confirming. Um, it's 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 very much like the, the classic line from the name of the Rose, the Umberto, Becco, Umberto Eco movie, whereby he says, you know, that everything we already need to know is known and that everything which we find out is merely a continuous confirmation of the fact that what we already know is indeed the truth. And that's very much where science is at. Whenever um, they they claim to have made new discoveries, they're really not that new, they're really not that exciting. They basically claim that what they have found is, is further evidence which backs up what they have already found. And anything which doesn't fall uh, fall or follow within that framework is really cast aside. It's really um, pushed and said to be of, of no worthy whatsoever. And, and that is sad because it means that an awful lot falls by the wayside. Um, you know, theoretical case here, we have this framework of a site whereby in the storyline you would say this site is 2000 to 3000 BC years old. Um, if you find a carbon dating result on the site, which suggests that somehow the site might be 4000 BC, what they do is they say, oh, well, that carbon dating result must be erroneous because we know that it is 2005 to 3000 BC. If you then find another carbon dating result, which suggests that the site might be 7000 BC, again, you say carbon dating result erroneously. A third one, same result. Now, guess what? This isn't a theoretical or a mythical site which I've, I've, t I've talked about, it's actually Stonehenge. In Stonehenge we have carbon dating results of 4000 BC, 3500 BC and 7500 BC. In all three separate occasions the scientists have pushed that aside because they know that Stonehenge is 2500 to 3000 BC at its most old uh, date range. And so that's one example out of you know, hundreds of examples across the world. Um, and I think it's time, really, that we begin to kind of like educate people by saying, you may see this 
headline which suggests that you know this thing isn't true or signs basically saying well you know stonehenge might be older but we know it's not um i i, as might, a matter I, of fact, I might i might add something to that educated people i would say mm-hmm. educated slash secular i i think it's important that we start getting more people involved in this that aren't pinned down to religious confining beliefs from the Iron Age. Well, uh, but but I think that there is something to be said for the fact that um, an awful lot of people are led down this trail um, of of, of religion being the same as science. You know, in in the book, I actually point that we've lost the the sort of notion that somehow 4004 BC was the start of, of the world, but we keep holding 4000 BC as the start of of civilization and to a large extent if you take the Bible the two are the same um, and it, it really is down to science to show that we are far older um, and and far more you know engineered than we ever were that this this idea um, of, of the Bible is is truly nothing at all like what real history is all about but science fails to do this so you know as much as as we might blame religion um actually science is to blame as well because science refuses to go beyond this 4000 bc year h yeah it's not so much religion that i would blame it's more the process of believing without evidence you know we we tend to believe things and forget that we started out just pretending like we knew something and somewhere along the line the pretending to believe something turns into a knowingness But, you know, there's something about this that you might be able to clarify for me. And it has to do with this. Okay, if we've had civilizations, well-developed, high-tech civilizations in the past that were fully formed, it becomes apparent that something must happen on this planet that completely wipes out traces of that civilization. Now, what makes us think that that's not going to happen again. Well, it's it's uh, f- first of all, you know, s- some of these traces of lost civilizations um, have been self-imposed. We know very little about ancient Egypt. Guess what? Because in just before 400 AD, a Christian mob destroyed everything about the Library of Alexandria. In the early 16th century. Mexico, Inca followed suit because all of these diabolical writings of the natives were burned by the Christians. So we've been doing an awful lot of self-imposed annihilation of our past. Um, And to a large extent, you know, we deny our past as well. In the case of Atlantis, which by all accounts disappeared underneath the sea, sea, we have... So what makes us think that we're not going... Just let me reform that question then. What makes us think that we're not going to do the same thing that previous civilizations have done? Like, is this shift, is there something different about this shift? Because let me tell you where I'm coming from. I, I, when I look at the world, like yesterday, I had a person here. He's a geoengineering expert, solar expert, and he's laying out some pretty incredibly negative things as far as the methane release and the... The, the world environment. I really am starting to get to the point to where I'm shifting over to the side of consciousness and spirituality because I really am starting to think that without a shift of consciousness, I'm not sure if we're smart enough or evolved enough to pull us through what's ahead of us. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, what's ahead of us is is once again removing certain parts of of, of our past. Uh, you know, history is is written every single day, and each day we rewrite history, um, and we let people get away with rewriting history on the most basic um, points of view. We have seen this in in the likes of Barack Obama, who write in saying, "We're going to do this, we're going to do, do that, we're going to do this." Five minutes into office, they go back on these changes, and we somehow assume that this is fine. Um, you know, we forget that these things have been said. We leave it to, you know, with all 
due respect because I absolutely love him, court gestures like John Stewart to point out what people have said several years ago or even just a few months ago and how we have changed history since then. We tend to forget where we come from. And I think that is the reason why um, we keep hitting the same problems because we think that we have or that we are facing a situation which is completely new, completely, you know, unique, that we somehow are are the sum them of everything. And as long as we're going to do that, as long as we think that whatever we're doing on this world or in this planet um, is, you know, the first time around, then we are going to make bad decisions whether it is for healthcare, whether it is for politics, whether it is for space, you know, what, whatever we do. Um, because first of all, you know, we don't see it from the perspective of history. Second of all, we also seem to think that everything is always from an isolationist point of view. Um, one of the other things which I think is, is severely wrong with this world is that we treat it as if nations still exist. Nations no longer exist. Our phone calls are answered in China or in India. Our furniture comes from China. You know, our oil comes from halfway across the world. Everything in this world is, is operating as, as one global village. Yet somehow we pretend and we let politicians once again get away with this thing that um, there is this sort of isolationist policy. And this again has a direct influence on history because we treat it as if all of these, situ uh, all of these civilizations de uh, developed independently as well. Whereas the truer perspective of history is that the world has been a global village for an awful long period of time. In 3000 BC, um, people in Europe were using an awful lot of bronze. Nobody knows where it's coming from. In 3000 BC in America, an awful lot of people were working, um, sorry, were taking up copper, which is one of the vital ingredients for making bronze. And nobody knows where it was used. Well, put those two together, realize that one of the centers of, of the Bronze Age industry was uh, the Orkney Isles of the top north of, of Scotland, and that these islands were always used as staging areas for uh, transatlantic contact. And again, you're beginning to see that, you know, there might be this transverse oceanic contact things like Tor Heyerdahl who've proven this as well and and so what, whenever we are looking at a, a modern situation we need to be aware of the fact that probably the situation has occurred in the past somewhere on our planet and that what we're doing today which is this one global village is something which existed 5000 years ago but we refuse to look at it from a from a global perspective and and this is sad because you know when it comes to looking at ecological crises um, some of which you know we're facing right now um, we're seeing that this has a direct effect for example in the Amazon area one of the last surviving pools of, of tribal wisdom um, because again science has said that this is somehow some kind of stupid primitive culture of people and hey you know some of them have never even been contacted by the white man well you know in the book I actually point out that uh, in 1500 AD the Amazon had tremendous cities, um, tremendous civilizations. And what happened was a few decades later, after the first wave of European explorers had gone through there, uh, what they actually found was that these civilizations had disappeared. And they jumped to the conclusion that the early explorers had basically made it all up, that none of what the early, earlier explorers were talking about was just basically BS. Um, what is now known through satellite imagery and on-site research is that these people actually were there, that they prospered, that the traces of their cities can be found, but that it was the white man's illnesses, the bacteria and the viruses, which basically killed hundreds of thousands of people in the Amazon. Now, the interesting thing is that on these territories, um, things like terra preta have been found, and terra preta is basically a kind of soil which is extremely fertile, which is man-made, man-engineered, and one of the most cleverest things um, which we have done from an agricultural perspective. Again, because science and history is pretending that all of these people are stupid and are primitive, um, this kind of technology...